Well, since the DJI NASA M Lite uh, didn't pick up enough satellites on this quadcopter, uh, I took the GPS off and we're going to go ahead and put a saw filter on it. And that's supposed to be like a bandpass filter that will block out uh, the signals from the 1.3 gigahertz transmitter over here and allow it to pick up satellites without interference. So I've got my GPS apart here and we're going to put the saw filter on it and the first thing to do is I had to order a saw filter and this was the part number I used and it came from DigiKey so there's the number if you need it and you can look at, there's different sources for this but you can look them up on the internet DigiKey is one of them uh, Newark is another one in fact I think I might have got them from Newark so, and here's the little plastic holder from one of them. They actually come in a strip of these plastic holders. So if you bought more than one, you'd have like a little strip with all the little chips si sitting in sockets in the holder right there. And this is a little diagram that I drew of the chip where it's got five pads and there's an input pin and then there's three ground pins. I've got uh, one marked here. And then there's the output pin right here. And here's their diagram of it. And you can get this uh, spec sheet off the internet as well. I'll try to put some links under the video to where you can get this stuff. But that's how to get started. And then you got to solder it. And John has volunteered to solder the wires on. What we got for tools is we got strippers, CA glue, and accelerator. The soldering iron with a really small tip there and a nice little pad there to clean it. Double stick tape and packing tape which is not in view right now. Really small solder here. This is uh, from Radio Shack. It's uh, 62362 rosin core solder. It is .022 inches in diameter Okay, John has stuck the little chip onto some tape that's been rolled up. Is that packing tape or regular tape? Packing tape. Packing tape. It's just been cut about the size of scotch tape. but Solder it onto that tiny little end. Got it tinned already. Right now we're going to check uh, to make sure there's no shorts. But here it is, and John's put a drop of CA on it. And it's actually clear, and you can see right through it. So right now we're looking at the bottom, is that correct? You're looking at the bottom right now. So you can so you can see the pads. Yeah. The pads, are. you should be able to see the pads on it and where the wires are soldered. I'm trying to get as close as I can, but, you know, it's hard. But there it is right there. So now John's going to take the meter and see if there's any shorts. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's open. we checking to make sure there's no shorts right now. There isn't any as far as I can tell. See that? If there is any, that meter should drop down to like zero. Touch the two meter leads together and check. See if it's working. Yeah, see now it's dropping down. Okay, so the meter is working. And so it looks like we have no shorts. Yeah. See, he did all that soldering without any magnification. Just with his glasses, his regular glasses, and he's nearsighted a little bit, I guess, so he can see really close. Whereas I'm the opposite, I'm farsighted. I'd have to have the eye loops and everything. So in preparation for the soldering, I had to go ahead and cut the etch between this pad here, which goes to the patch antenna, and pin 2 on the chip, which was back here. I had to cut that etch and also I had to scrape some of the uh, protective coating off the ground plane here and tin that to get ready to receive the wire. Now that John has gone and finished soldering the leads onto the saw filter and encapsulated in CA glue, use some of this uh, CA glue right here to encapsulate it, I have glued his finished product down to the GPS and you can see it right here. 
So the CEA glue is clear and you can still see the chip. And then underneath that is the uh, welder rubber cement gluing it down. So the next thing is I've got to connect the input, which is right here, to this pad which goes to the patch antenna. And then I've got to connect the uh, output, which is over here, to this wire, which is going to the input of the receiver. And then the ground wire over here is going to go to this pad right here. So I'm going to solder that next. Okay, I got all the wires soldered on now. John's playing his squirrel game over there, so he's having a lot of fun. But yeah, I got all three wires soldered on, and now we need to test it. So I've temporarily mounted the GPS module right here. Just taped it down, stuck it under a tie wrap. The base under a tie wrap taped it down, and it's connected in here on the DJI NASA M Lite right here and we're going to go out and test the saw filter and see what it does. Quadcopter is outside here and the radio the DX8 is over here and it's turned on. Okay so the first test is we're just going to plug in the quadcopter flight battery and we're not going to plug in the video battery right here so the transmitter is not going to be going. So the first thing we're going to do is just see if we can get some satellites uh, without the transmitter. Okay, so we're getting um, about five satellites. I'm getting one green blink and one red blink. So we're getting about we're getting about five satellites, but we're not transmitting with the video transmitter up here. So now let's see what happens when I plug in the video transmitter. Okay, now, here's the light blinking right here. And we've got one green and one red. Which means we do have some satellites, maybe five. Now I'm going to plug in the 1280 megahertz uh, video transmitter. Okay, let's try 1280 megahertz. Later I'm going to try 1258, but let's try 1280 first. Okay, plugging in the transmitter. Virtually nothing. Oh, there's three. Three popped up just for a minute. But you can see that really knocked it down. Okay, now let's try another test. Let's switch over to 1258. Now, it's on channel 9 right now, which is 1280. I'm going to go up to channel D, which is 1258. Now there's nothing on the screen because i got to go out and switch the video transmitter on the quadcopter. So I'm going to go under here and press this button. Alright. You can see we've got a picture. And we got six satellites already. So as soon as I went to 1258, I got six satellites. On 1280, I had zero. I mean, it was, it was like instantaneous. So it's like the saw filter works great for 1258, but does nothing for 1280. 1280 still swamps it. Of course, I got an 800 uh, milliwatt video TX, so it's pretty powerful. What I'm going to try is put some of these ferrite cores that I don't know where we got them, maybe off cables or they could have been from Radio Shack, and they're like in two halves. I'm going to put one right down here. Just put one on the input. I like it a little closer than that. You can just try it there. And I'm going to put one on the output. Oh, which is which? Yeah, this is the output, I guess. There we go. Now I got one on each end of the wire. Now, how many satellites we got up there? Did that do anything for us? Uh, looks like it made it worse. Made it worse? Four satellites. Well, I was over the top of it. You know, my head was over the top of the satellite. Light and start coming back. Five. Yeah. Five coming back up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, it went back down to four. Oh, well, there's five again. Doesn't seem to make a big difference. No. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I got these ferrite cores on here. I'm going to go back to 1280. So I just press the button. The screen should be blank. Go ahead and knock this back down to 1280. There we go. 80. Up, oh, went to five there for a minute. Now it's zero. Hmm. So it looks like the ferrite cores might have helped a little, but I don't see any big difference. I mean, I'm still back to zero again. I'm going to go back up to 1258, channel D. Okay, I'm going to press the button. We're going to go to channel D. Got four satellites already. Coming up. The ferrite cores don't seem to work as good on 1258. Okay, you just stay here and I'll go take the ferrite cores off. We went up to five a little bit there while you were taking them off. Six. For a little bit. Six. Yeah, I'm seeing it out here too. One red, I mean one green, then one red. One green and one red. Okay, now I'm going to run in and get that piece of foil. There's a, some comments that you can put a piece of foil underneath it. Let's do that. Got seven there for a little bit. Hey, there's my piece of foil that has a hole and a slit, and I'm going to put that on the bottom of the GPS just to see what it does. So I'll be going out here. Just stay here. Now some people say that you should ground the foil or it won't have any effect. I think that was on uh, Pepsi Cola's information on his blog. Now let's watch what happens when I go back to 1280. Now this is with the saw filter installed. Okay, I'm going to go back to 1280. So I've got to cut this off for a second. I'm going to go down from channel D to channel 9. Alright, pressing the button. Going to channel 9, which is 1280. You can already see the satellites are falling rapidly. Now we got three and four. Flying with 1258 is the way to go. But the reason yeah. I wanted to use 1280, of course, is I wanted to use my laser uh, brushless gimbal receiver, which was 1280, that I got from my Fat Sharks. And it's, uh, I don't have a 1258 receiver that I can plug directly into my Fat Sharks that makes them, you know, so they work without a ground station. So uh, that was my originally, uh, original idea, but looks like I'm going to have to give that up or mm -hmm. Laser Brushless Gimbal is going to have to come out with one that has 1258. I'm going to go put it back on 1258. We'll just see what happens. Go up to channel D. There we go. Okay, I just pushed the button for 1258. Let's just see how long it takes. There we go. Already six satellites. I mean, it was a matter of seconds. It went from it's five and six satellites in just seconds. Yeah. So it looks like the uh, the filter may help for that. The saw filter may help for 1258. Really does nothing much for 1280. Okay, just an experiment with a different kind of antenna. I took the uh, the blue beam uh, circular polarized antenna off, and I've got this one that came with the uh, transmitter. I'm just hanging it over the front, trying to get it away from the DJI, see if that helps. And uh, right now the transmitter's not on, and we're waiting for satellites. Okay, just plugged in the transmitter. It went down like crazy. And... Already zero, it's like it's worse. And I had a green, blinking green light, good signal, as soon as I turned it on, it dropped to zero with that other type of antenna. Okay, I spoke too soon. Looks like with this different kind of antenna, we have seven satellites like we did before on 1258. But now let's switch to 1280 and see what happens. Did take a couple of minutes to get that seven satellites. I think maybe, maybe uh, three minutes or something. Going down channel nine. Waiting for the base station to sync back up. There it is. Already dropped the four satellites. Let's see what happens. 
just trying to see if we can do better with a different antenna. Well, at least it's not zero. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Moving the antenna away from the DJI helped. You know, it's got almost had five there, just rocked to five. So that helps a little. I guess if I had my antenna way out on a boom somewhere. Hey, I got six now on 1280. So apparently having the antenna too close to the DJI is also an issue, as I thought, because it's just getting into all the equipment. It's not the GPS only. It gets in the wiring and everything. But, you know, this is still not really acceptable. I'd rather have those seven satellites, six or seven. So, that's that. Let's put the antenna down below the quadcopter. And John says we got eight satellites. Eight tops so far. So eight we're tops. Six. Oh, video but we're losing right. video, of course, because that's hard on the video. But, yeah, we're getting six to eight when we put the antenna underneath. And this is on 1280, so antenna placement underneath sure helps. Still a drop down to five there. For a minute, there's six. So, you know, this is an idea. a very variable thing. So what, what's your idea? What if you replace it with the whip antenna, but aim it like, instead of straight up or straight down, aim it like this? Could work, I don't know. It's coming back up now. Oh, I just saw the screen switch there, didn't you? Yeah, that's another issue. The 1280 makes my my screen switch and stuff like that. So it interferes with other stuff. It's not just the GPS, like I said. So, yeah, 1280 just is a very overwhelming for the equipment. So, yeah, we're getting more satellites by placing the antenna in different spots. But uh, still, I don't think 1280 is recommended. It's just very hard on the whole thing. Hmm.